Hey guys, thanks for joining another episode here. We're gonna continue the Candy Factory segments, popular request. Uh, in no particular order, we're gonna talk about something called the Twix line. Let me highlight it there. And uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching. I'm not wearing a beanie cap. This is actually a hat that just goes to the side. You can't really see it because I don't want to hit the, the back of the chair with it. Uh, anyway, so I uh, hope the sound sounded good. I think it sounds like a million bucks. Sounded so much better. Uh, the Twix line. So along with the candy, fa along with the M&Ms that we made at the candy factory there, we made both kinds of Twix bars. You've got the, uh, the peanut butter Twix, my favorite, and then you've got the regular Twix. And so all of this starts at a gigantic roller. If you can just imagine this gigantic machine, and so caramel is being piped in, you know, from the bottom of the place, much like the chocolate tank factory where I was at. Well, caramel's coming in there, and it's spinning it, and it's, it's getting it super thin. And then somehow through the machinery, you know, as it goes down, like it starts, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's like a, this thing, this whole process from start to finish is about 100 yards. And for those of you, that's a football field. For those of you that don't know what 100 yards is, just imagine the length of a football field. So start to finish, it starts and it just goes all the way down from putting the, the, the cookie crust together to sealing those to putting the, uh, the chocolate on the top or infusing it with peanut butter, depending on which line it was. And then towards the middle, you know, and then, then they even get refrigerated, you know, and so then they come out, you know, with it, with, it's not dripping chocolate anymore and it's kind of cooled off some. So it kind of hardens up to where it gets ready to be sealed in the, um, in the, in, in, in the, in the Twix packaging, in the wrappers. And so, and then from there, then you've got people that are putting them in, you know, sets of 12 into a box or something and then going through shipping. Super cool process to watch. Well, the Twix line is what I got uh, uh, stationed on for, for a while. I, 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 that was a cool line. I liked it. Um, we had one of the funniest guys that I have ever met to this day. His name is Jeff Evans. And I have sent him a couple of Facebook requests. He's there, but I don't think he checks it a lot. He's down one of the funniest guys I know, period. And he just happens to work at the candy factory. Well, back then, I looked like The Rock. And so I had the sideburns. When The Rock started, he had sideburns. And all of us guys had sideburns in the, in the late 90s, uh, for whatever reason. And so he, we talked about wrestling a lot. So he just called me Rock. Rocky? Rock? And so one night, we were at a meeting, a Twix line meeting. And so before we would go out to work, we would have, you know, like a little, little, little meeting, believe it or not, even the candy factory has meetings. And so we would be talking about, uh, you know, whatever, like who's on whose line and what team gets to go to break first. I mean, the breaks were super important, as you guys know from the, from the earlier episode. You know, it was, okay, you're here, we're at work now, let's talk about break times. Let's talk about breaks. Let's make sure everybody's getting their breaks. You know, like we're on the, you know, like we're on the war front or something in Iraq or something. Those are the, those are the guys need the breaks. And so not, not people working at a candy factory. But yeah, the breaks were super important. But also any kind of random news about lines being shut down or, you know, whatever special events that are taking place or what have you. Anyway, and so our manager comes out and he says, guys, now, again, I'm still pretty new. So I don't know what in the world anybody's talking about here when they start talking about praying mantis. So our boss comes out and he's like, guys, and he's super serious. He's like, guys, we've been uh, set for a code orange alert for praying mantis on the Twix line number two. So for those of you stationed on Twix line number two tonight, I want everybody to keep a close eye on the praying mantis. They've been seeing him all day long on first shift. Second shift now, you guys have the baton. It's up to you to keep an eye out for the praying mantis as soon as you see a praying mantis. To get it off the conveyor belt immediately. And so in my head, I'm like, what's this guy talking about praying mantis? Because he's talking, it sounds like he's describing, you know, like the guy earlier talking about the gorillas, but it sounds like he's describing, I mean, several dozen. You know, if, if, they're, if all day long people have been seeing praying mantis, and I've never seen a praying mantis in my life. And apparently at the candy factory that day, well, people, we've seen a hundred. And what are they doing near Twix bars, for crying out loud? And so, now, my buddy Jeff is privy to, to the praying mantis. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Jeff was hands down one of the funniest guys in the world. Imagine trying to describe somebody funny to your friends and they just don't get it until they meet that person. He's kind of that guy. And so Jeff is turning around and, and he's like, he's like, Rock, what do you think about all the praying mantis, man? What are we going to do? What if one bites your leg? What if one takes out your ankle and you can't defend the world heavyweight champion at hell in a cell against the undertaker? And he used to love talking about wrestling. And he, this guy used to crack everybody up. Everybody wanted to work around Jeff. He was so funny. 
it did the story doesn't do him justice how funny this guy is and if he'll ever turn his facebook on because he lives near here we'll get him on the show no doubt if he ever checks his so i don't know how you'd watch this jeff but if you're watching somehow or somebody lives with jeff jeff evans in polk county please please bud please give me a call send me an email come on the show and let's talk about the praying mantis so jeff is really really cooking this story up and he's like man the praying mantis Boy, I hope nobody, man, I hope nobody dies out here tonight by the praying mantis. And so as we're walking to the uh, Twix line area, Jeff is like, he's, uh, <laughs> you've seen the soldiers that kind of squat down some and they're still able to walk like, in, you know, in a tactical, <laughs> in a tactical position. And that's what Jeff is doing all the way to the Twix line. And then he dropped down, looked on the ground. He's like, Rock, I think I've seen one. Get over here. Rock, get over here and karate chop this praying mantis. It's going to bite Claudia's leg. And I don't know, I guess you had to be there, but uh, man, it was so funny. Come to find out, and Jeff did that like for the first hour of the shift, just constantly just hiding behind things and looking around. It's like, Rock, have you seen one yet? Have you seen one yet? God, God, I hope everything's going to be okay tonight here. And uh, so, come to find out, Praying Manus is where the machine is sending out the Twix bars. And for whatever reason, the temperature's off. Maybe the chocolate is gummed up. And then you'll have... Two Twix bars lay on top of each other, crisscrossed. And then you may even have a third one. So there's something wrong with the machinery. They're supposed to put them all out like an exact row of maybe, let's say, 24 Twix Twix bars, just perfectly even, perfect. And then with the praying mantis, you're going to have one or two every other row, and they're just kind of, they're bunched up, and they don't look nothing like praying mantis. Maybe they do, I don't know. But uh, so that's what they call them there when they bunch up. And so the maintenance department has to get in there and tweak some things in order to get, so something's gummed up and they got to fix it. But until then, the machine is making about 60% good Twix bars. We got to keep those. We got to ship them out. But the praying mantis, we have to, <laughs> they have this metal poker and you sit on either side of the Twix line and here they come. And then if you see any defects, you stick them and then you put them in this big bucket called rework. And so that's how we looked out for the praying mantis. Super hilarious, funny story back in the day and a super funny guy named uh, Jeff Evans. Now, we also had a visitor that would come to us in on the Twix area. I don't know this guy's name time ago, but he would visit. I think this guy's job was, I mean, I hope it was his job because he sure let everybody think that was his job. He would go check on people at different stages, stages of, of, of the facility and he would give you a break. On top of the breaks, here was this guy that was just like a relief guy. And he would come up to people, but he, he would only give the ladies breaks. So this guy was pretty smooth. That was his game. That was his stick, is he would only give the ladies that he liked breaks. And so they'd be like, oh, thank you. Oh, James, or whatever his name was. Oh, you're so wonderful. Thanks for giving us an extra break. We're only working four hours a day anyway, so... So he would come around and then we would ask him for a break. Jeff would ask him for a break and he'd be like, oh, no, man, uh, I got to head over to Sugar Shell. I got to head over to Sugar Shell, Sugar Shell. And so Sugar Sugar Shell, so that was our nickname for him because we never figured out this dude's name. We just nicknamed him Sugar Shell. And he would say, Sugar Shell, my name is Sugar Shell, Sugar Shell. And so that was a, a department that was several things over. And that's what is exactly what it was. That was the place that would spray coat the sugar coating onto the M&Ms. So we nicknamed him appropriately Sugar Shell, Sugar Shell. This is how deep his voice was, Sugar Shell. Hey, Sugar, you need a break? You need a break, Sugar? I'm here to give you, here to give you another break here, Sugar. Sugar Shell. He wouldn't give no guys breaks, though. We, and, and whenever we mentioned it, he'd be like, oh, no, man. Uh, I, got, I got to head back over to Sugar Shell. I gotta get. I gotta get back over there. My team needs me over there. The sugar shell. I gotta give some more breaks over there. Sugar shell. See you guys later. See you guys later. So that was the sugar shell guy. It's pretty funny. Um, now, I mean, <laughs> back, I'll, I'll wrap it up with a couple more Jeff Jeff stories that I just uh, remembered. And so, there was a girl. Tongue piercings wasn't really big back then, but we did have had a girl that worked with us, and she had her tongue. She had her tongue pierced. I think they wanted her to take it out for whatever reason. But anyway, Jeff, I don't have my car keys near me, so you're just going to have to visualize this. Jeff loved giving this girl a hard time about her tongue ring. And I think maybe she kind of justifiably so because she thought she was 
the hottest thing that worked there, period. And she was okay, but she was by no means the super hottest girl of the candy factory. But she really thought she was, and she acted like it. And so I think that's what attracted some negative attention to her. She brought it on herself, really, is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say if I have anything like that. Anyway, but she had her tongue pierced, a ball piercing on her tongue. And Jeff used to love, <laughs> Jeff would come up to her, and he would have his car keys <laughs> attached to his tongue, and he would just be like, let's say her name is Tanya. He'd be like, oh, that, that, Tanya. And then he, he would have his, he would just imagine it, guys. It was so immature, but it was so funny because she would get so mad and she would throw Twix bars at him or the nearest empty uh, cardboard box at him. It was hilarious. Working with Jeff was the best thing in the world. And I would, and then when I got sent to an, an, uh, another department, another part of the factory, and, and I would make probably once a week, I would go out of my way. I would actually use one of my breaks to try to find Jeff because he got on a rotating schedule there. So I, sometimes he'd be there, sometimes he wouldn't. But anyway, because that dude was hilarious. One day we were sitting in the break room and one of our friends was... Now, some of these guys, uh, all kinds of different backgrounds there, very educated, very business. You you would be you would be having lunch with an engineer. There's a lot of engineers there because of all the machinery, a lot of food, uh, food research and development people, and then you would have people that uh, barely made it through high school, and so this is also their job too. You know because you could just be trained on how to use the forklift, you could be trained how to do certain things, or you could just stay just candy cleaning, just candy clean, candy clean, and. And life is good, cleaning candy, man. Cleaning candy for four hours a day, being paid for eight or nine or 10 or 12. Life is good. Well, this guy here, we're sitting here uh, eating lunch or something like that. And he's looking at, now remember, I have been through, I've successfully completed one or two semesters of Bible college. And for some of these people, I might as well went to Yale University because they had never they're never going to go to college. They're, they, some of them may not even finished high school, but this was a place where you could, you know, if you had a good background, you know, you could, you could do, you could pass a drug test, uh, except for that one guy, Cody's, you know, whatever. But uh, so anyway, so this guy did not know what iodized salt was. So we were sitting in the break room one day and he's looking at this container and he's like, I'll die. Eodized, eodized. And, and he's like, Rock, what do you think this means? And I'm like, iodized salt, iodized. And uh, it's just a term for the the kind of potency of the salt. I don't know, you know? And he's like, iodized. And it's like, iodized, 99% iodized salt. And he's like, whoa, whatever it is, it sure is a lot of it in there. <laughs> iodized salt. Now, those, uh, there, there was that group there that was from, from the mountains, the Polk County Mountains. If you've ever seen my Facebook, a lot of those pictures uh, about the Blue Hole, the Ocoee Rivers and, uh, up there, beautiful, beautiful parts of the world. Um, a lot of those guys were from the mountain and mountain people. Well, there's no college there. Yeah, I mean, so there's no really no incentive to go to college there because, you know, you're just going to get some jobs in manufacturing. So you really don't need a college there. But that was that group. Uh, and that was my favorite group of people there. They were just some good old boys from the mountains and they really respected Dale Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. They respected the NASCAR situation deeply. They, they would share a lot of good hunting stories. Um, they were some really, they were some really good, funny, interesting dudes. Well, I don't know if it's like this where you live, but there is a circular newspaper that goes around here called the Tennessee Trader. And I'm sure it's discontinued now because of the internet or whatever, but, but back in the eighties, in the 90s, there's this this newspaper that's only maybe 20, 30 pages long. And it's basically like a Craigslist. If you can imagine Craigslist, it's just a Craigslist in a newspaper form. So uh, it was called the Tennessee Trader. And I think they come out on Tuesday mornings and they were a dollar, you know, whatever. Well, a lot of people like that because you can purchase, you can find you a good used washer dryer, lawnmower, camouflage, ammunition, uh, guns, some shotguns. You could buy some good, good, good weapons on there. Ninja swords, um, clothes, tennis shoes, you know, whatever tractors, you know, what microphones, maybe, I don't know. And it was just, it was, it was basically, it was a yard sale in a newspaper and these things come out every Tuesday and it was just local here. So it was bargain deals 
with from places and people that you probably knew without having to drive really far. And so the Tennessee trader was a big deal. And so they would let this guy leave work one day and he would go get, you know, like a dozen of these Tennessee traders for all the, all the guys. And, uh, that was a big deal. Like he never missed Tuesdays cause that was his job is to go bring back Tennessee traders. And then, uh, man. And, and so they would, they, fa- they found themselves, I'm not ratting people out. This is like 23 years ago. So there's, but, but these guys love the Tennessee trader so much. Like they could not wait until break time to read it. So they found themselves some sort of silo. And when I say silo, I mean, literally a silo. If you imagine a, a, a corn silo or something like that, you know, back in a farm or something. Well, they had these. Remember how big the place is. And so they had these silos. But at the very base of the silo was some operating computers and machinery. Before you got into it, it would house the product above you. And so they had like these chairs set up and like this little secret hideout. I and mean, everybody had like these secret hideouts there because the place was so big. And so they would every Tuesday, like I would never sit in there and read the Tennessee trader. These guys would be in there for, I don't know, a half an hour or something like that. Just reading about all the sales. But the guy that I was partnered with was, was in there. And so sometimes I would have to go find him. Like I wanted to be a part of the group. I, I didn't, I didn't want to be some weird, some weirdo who didn't enjoy the Tennessee trader. So I would always ask them, I'd, I'd give them a dollar to get me one, but like I'd read it for a second and then I'd get back to work. And, and they, they always carried it in their back pocket, like all day long Tuesday. So if you were cool, you had a Tennessee trader in your back pocket carrying it around. So, uh, it, it, anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good one, but guys, um, I mean, I can go on and on about the candy factory. I don't want to bore anybody to death here, but, but just imagine basically what's, what's the Batman layer. What's that play, the Gotham city. And it just, just the Gotham city of candy factory. If you can just imagine that. But anyway, thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. Thanks so much for everybody's support. And I uh, hope you enjoyed these candy factory stories. It is a definitely one of a kind place. Let me take these off. I've been wearing these all, all evening there. That's better. And then now, now, now you can see the back of my, back of my head. Uh, these are lucky brand hats. These are really good. So if you're looking for a good fitting hat, it is hard to find a good fitting hat. This is that high brim style. I just usually just like the regular, uh, but these look good. They fit good. I got these and we were down in a, uh, me and Dina were down in a surf shop down there in Destin Beach. I forgot that, you know, those, those Alvin's place, you know, the Alvin's beach stores. So I remember getting a couple of these down there when I was down there long, uh, last year or something. But anyway, they fit good. They look good. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. More content coming as always. And uh, you guys have a great rest of your day doing whatever you're doing. Thanks. See you on the next one.